Um, okay, so we need to find a, a just any any given harlot and talk to them. Um, need to go back to the post, and then we're gonna go and talk to Anya. All right. Okay. All right. Let's go find ourselves a harlot and hopefully not get killed on the way. That guy's fucking guarding that one. All right. Hey everybody, welcome back to Planescape. Hello. So we're we just are here in Planescape. We're looking for a harlot. Well, I mean, yeah, we're gonna talk to one today. But actually, let's go talk to this Dabu or Davis. I'm not quite <laughs> sure how you would pronounce them. You see a tall creature with a shock of white hair. Its skin has a greenish cast, and a pair of goat horns protrude from its forehead. It is dressed in long flowing robes and appears to be floating slightly above the ground. Readings. The creature turns to face you, and a series of symbols appear around its head. The symbols have a slight glow about them, and they just hover there. Oh, for the power's sake, Piking Dabus. What's wrong? Oh, he, he's a Dabus. They speak in rebuses, uh, these annoying word puzzles. If you don't know what he's saying, then we better find a native or some other way to communicate with him. If we want to. Another annoying bunch. My bet, they can speak. They uh, would just rather piss everyone else off by trying to puzzle out what they're saying. What's a Davis? Chant is, is they're the janitors for the Lady of Pain. They float around, breaking, fixing, and patching up sigil according to her whims. They're worse than the corpse flies. Morte sighs. Uh, you can't swat them, though, or the lady will get, um, upset. Lady of Pain, who's that? Oh, she runs the city. You'll know her if you see her. <laughs> She's got these blades around her face. She's about the size of a giant, and she floats off the ground, just like these guys. Morte nods at the Dapus, who's looking at you both. Nobody knows much about her. She doesn't speak much. All you need to know is that if you don't want to make her angry, if you see her, my advice, run. I see. The Dabus waits patiently, its hands tucked into its sleeves. A series of symbols materialize above its head and then vanish, and a question mark appears. Try to strike up a conversation, sure. Why not? You ask the Dabus several questions, trying to get a feel for rebuses that appear above his head. It is extremely patient throughout your discussion, giving you easy sentences to translate. After a few minutes, you're starting to get the hang of it. It feels like you've done this before. Maybe you can help me. The Dabus waits. Who are you? The Dabus inclines its head slightly and a stream of symbols appears above its head. You think he's saying he's a Dabus. I had another question for you. The Dabus waits. What are you doing? A batch of symbols appears above the Dabus' head. You think he's attending to his duty or duties. I had another question for you. Can you tell me about the Lady of Pain? A lone symbol appears above the Debus' head. This one shows a metallic female mask with blades coming out of the sides. Just looking at the ghostly image makes you feel uncomfortable. Uh, that's all I wanted to know. Farewell. The Debus bows slightly. The symbols swell around its head, and then it turns away. Okay, so why are we going around and talking to random people in the hive? The answer to that question is, we are playing a... Ooh, goodness, okay. Uh, we are playing a... Oh, I scared the shit out of Ingress by opening a portal. That was not very nice of us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, so... We, uh, we're playing a pacifist playthrough of Planescape Torment, and so in order for us to be able to contend with the very rare fights that we're going to have to do as we go, hi Ingress, we're, <laughs> we're going to need, 
to uh, basically keep up on our levels. And the best way to do that is to talk to certain people throughout the hive and just gain the various uh, bits of role-playing experience that you can pick up uh, over the course of the game. And there's quite a bit of it to be had. Um, just in this sort of area alone, uh, we have picked up a good two, three, maybe even four thousand experience just through talking to people. Uh, we're gonna get, we're gonna pick up just a little bit more talking to this harlot right here. You see a tired-looking woman dressed in tight leather bodice and leggings. The odor of cheap perfume surrounds her like a cloud, and her face is covered with a mask of crude makeup. She smiles as she sees you. Why don't you ch stay and chat with me a bit, love? Greetings. The woman looks coyly at you. Now you look to be a blood who's lost something. Mayhap I can help you find it, Cutter. She smiles slightly. Oh. What good fortune. We probably <laughs> lost what we're looking for back at your kip, miss. <laughs> uh. Actually, I'm missing a journal. Hey? She seems confused. What are you about? Uh, forget the journal. Maybe you can help me find what I'm really missing. Her tone becomes businesslike. I love. Now there's the matter of a finder's fee. Okay, uh, we're, <laughs> this is not exactly what we need. Um, other questions? <laughs> there we go. The woman frowns. I'm not attacked. She frowns and then rubs two fingers together. Unless you got some jink to pay for me time. I can pay you how much? For a handsome basher like yourself. She gives a wide smile, revealing a row of dirty teeth. Three coppers will be enough to loosen me tongue. She licks her lips and then frowns. Other questions of a deeper chant will cost you more, though. Sounds fair. Here's three commons. We've thrown like 30 commons at Requins. Yeah, so. why not? <laughs> I then. She slips the jink into her palm where it promptly vanishes. Now, there were some things I wanted to know. All right. Ask your questions, yeah. love. All right. <clears throat> I'm looking for someone named Farid. Farid? Now that's one of the greater darks, love. If you be wanting to know about that blood, that'll be thrice the coppers of a normal asking. Fair enough. Here's nine commons. She gives you your coins a once-over and then shrugs and pockets them. What you be wanting to know about old Farad? At that price, anything you can tell me about him. She shrugs. Chant is he's a collector, boss. He has a whole bunch of bloods in his shadow. Where can I find him? Nah, no one knows for dead, sure. But if I were to suggest a place, love, I'd say Ragpicker Square. Ragpicker Square. Aye. A big old heap of rags and trash three blocks due west of the mortuary. All the collectors state their kip there. Chances are Ferret's got his kip there too. What's a collector? You know, them sods that pick up deaders for jink. A sorry lot. They gather bodies. Why? Because they don't get the looks to do what I do. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Uh, I had some more questions. Ask your questions, love. Uh, Alright, that's, that's probably enough. Actually, never mind. Farewell. Your loss. When you get tired of losing things and you need to find some things, love, you come see me. I'll keep that in mind. Farewell. Chief. There we go. Can you sport me some jink? It's, uh... It's been a long time, it has. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even going to ask how you intend to accomplish this. The woman breaks in. 
It's twice the cost for the Mimir. Or any other degenerate. Degenerate? <laughs> ah, Mimir. Uh, uh, Mimir's a talking encyclopedia. Eh, that's me, chief. I see. Well, don't sweat it, Morte. From the looks of her, I'm probably saving you from dying twice. <laughs> May a puck shrivel your innards. You have the stink and fashion sense of a goat herd, and you're twice as ugly. Uh. New time, all right. <laughs> I love this. Morte stares, hypnotized, as the harlot lets loose a stream of obscenities. At the end of the verbal avalanche, Morte is silent for a moment and then turns to you. Wow, chief. Got a few more taunts for the old arsenal. He turns back to the harlot, who is catching her breath. I'm also... in love. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fantastic. All right. Whew. Uh, yeah, so, uh... That's, uh, that's the harlot. Also, um, as a matter of fact, so what Morte was just saying, uh, where he got a few more insults for his, uh, for his arsenal, he actually just gained more insults. Uh, it is one of his special abilities when he is in combat to taunt enemies and cause status effects on them. And so, basically, by pissing people off and learning creative insults for Morte, you're actually giving him additional skills. That's awesome. It is fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got to talk to the post because we did miss one or two things last time we talked. All right, this field is so looking we've already... in sad shape. Yeah, we saw it. We, we talked to this guy before. Yeah. Okay, I, examine I, the corpse. Despite so many stitches, um, I think we read yeah. this too, didn't we? Mm, we may have. Anyway, what we need to do is grab this cobblestone. You grab oh, a hold of the cobblestone and pull it out of the corpse's head. Traces of brain matter and rotting flesh slowly drip from it. It looks like whatever was in its head turned to ooze long ago. Okay. Uh, a number uh, of the leaflets have been ruined by rain, but some of them are still legible. One tacked to his back is from something called the Office of Vermin and Disease Control. The one on okay, his forehead. We've gone through yeah, this we did this one. Yeah. So I'm just gonna. Uh, I I just want to make sure that we. There we go. The graffiti. Right. Okay. Yeah. The graffiti runs from obscenities about dustmen to slogans glorifying what appear to be local gangs. One piece of graffiti catches your eye. Someone has carved the name Ferrid on the corpse's left arm and then slashed an X across it. Ferrid. Updated my journal. The zombie immediately jerks his left arm upwards and points far to the west and downwards. A moment later... The f arm falls back to his side with a thump. Yes. So, when you tell this thing the name of something that you're looking for, it points you in the right direction. Beautiful. So, we just got 500 XP, and we found out that Ferret is west and down. Nice. Which is fantastic. Oh, nice. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Uh, so, that's the post. Um, yeah. Now, let's, uh, let's go visit... Um, I'm just going to save because I think there's a chance that we could instigate a fight. I don't think so, but... Well, what is it? <sighs> the red-haired girl scours as you approach, and her tail begins to lash back and forth. Well, what is it? You said Ferid was to the south and west of the mortuary, correct? <laughs> there we go. Number four, yeah. So, oddly enough, south and west of the mortuary is an alley filled with heavily armed thugs. <laughs> Do you know anything about that? Oh, I... Well, maybe it's best asking where old stutter crunch is. <laughs> uh, All right. Um, this, well, yeah, let's bluff. Enough of your lies. Tell me where Ferret is, girl, or you'll soon be a number amongst the city's dead. Bar that. I have nothing more to say to you, Burke. Get. You better watch your tongue, girl, or it's coming off. You better remember that if we speak again. Aye. Bike off to wherever you came from, then. Farewell to you, too. <laughs> 
Alright, and I reckon that is just about all of the time that we have for this episode. Wow, we did it. Yeah, this is this, 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 this is a lot of talky talky. But yeah, no, this is a very this is like if if you're looking for a channel that does narrative heavy, this is pretty much like the this is the pinnacle even for us. Yeah, this is um, this is crazy. All right. I yeah, don't, I don't have to talk this so much, much on Sierra Saturdays. Yeah, because so much of this is is dialogue. Uh, I, I like to get a slightly longer episode. So why don't we do one more before we call it a day? Sure, why not? Sound good? All right. So uh, I'm just going to save again. Yes, that's fine. Let's talk to Anya. This man looks haunted. His eyes are half-lidded as if he's had trouble sleeping, and his hair is long and unkempt. His beard is flecked with bits of dead skin and old bits of food. He doesn't seem to notice you as you approach. Greetings. The man glances up to the sound of your voice and his slack expression vanishes. He looks like someone who has lit two fires in his eyes. What be your business barking and into, barging into me house? His eyes narrow and his teeth clench. Get, or I'll send you back to wherever grave you crawled from. Calm yourself. I have some questions. The man's face turns blood red and he begins shouting. Are you daft? With a snarl, he spits at your feet. You filthy scar-ridden dog. Off with you. Or even the powers won't be able to save your hide. Farewell then. The man throws a parting shot at your back. You'd best never cross me door again. You rich stinking bastard. Okay, let's talk to his wife. <laughs> <laughs> this woman looks to be in her middle years, and her hair has streaks of grey running through it. Lines of worry crisscross her face. As she sees you, she seems torn between asking you to leave and calling for the man at the table. Greetings. Yeah, you best leave. For I call me husband. He won't take kindly to your having barge she way into our home. Calm down. I just had some questions. She glances toward her husband, worry in her eyes. I, I, have not the time, stranger. Do not be troubling me with such things. Excuse me, are you all right? Me? She seems surprised. Oh, uh... Aye, aye. She lowers her voice. Get best leave. Me husband has not made himself of late. Get best not provoke him with your persistence. I spoke with him. He seems troubled. What's wrong with him? He's been out of sorts of late. A touch of the cough, maybe. She gives an unconvincing half shrug. What's really wrong with him? I think... I think he's done something he regrets. Her worried expression melts into despair. I think he signed one of the dead contracts. I cannot imagine what possessed him to do such a foolish thing. Dead contracts? The dead. The dustman. Have contracts that give them the right to someone's body after they die. What do the dustmen do with the body after death? Animate it with the black magics. Turn it into one of the walking dead. Make it a worker till... She looks at her husband helplessly. Till it rots away. Why did your husband sign such a thing? He may have been go eager to bring home some more <laughs> jink than custom. He's prideful, but I think he's hurt himself more by doing so. Can this contract be undone? She looks at you surprised and then sighs. <clears throat> <sighs> I've tried. I've spoken to the dustman. He did all the signing with, but he's cold and chill like all the dusties 
He even lectured me on me husband as if I had no right to try and help him. Her lips become a tight, thin line, as if picturing the dustman's face. It was cold and cruel he was. Let me see what I can do. Who was this dustman your husband signed the contract with? I had a dusty calls himself Gravesend. I know that's not his first name. Here's a table at the dustman bar in the hive, gathering dust. I believe the place is named. You can most like find him there, trying to get more people to sign his contracts. I'll seek him out then. Where is the gathering dust bar? Updated my journal. Head out to the street outside and go to the memorial stone. Then head south and west from there. She taps her finger against her chin. You should run right into it. There's four. There's one of them. Her face wrinkles in disgust. Walking corpses out front. Very well. I'll go see what I can do. I won't turn away such a friendly gesture. She seems grateful, and then her worried expression returns. But I must ask you not to let on I asked you to do such a thing. Me husband has a terrible temper, and if if he were to find out... She shudders. I promise that your husband will not find out. Thank you, stranger. I appreciate your help. It's no trouble. I'll go see about undoing the husband's contract now, not the, your. It's weird to call him the husband at this point. (laughs) We're already acquainted. (laughs) I'm out. (laughs) Nameless one, out. Mic drop. This might be my third episode in a row I'm recording. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> all right oh well yep yeah, let's let's give matt's throat a break uh and call it a day so thank you very much everybody for joining us in planescape torment today we will see you all again next week until then however have yourself a merry little Planer Christmas. day Planer day <laughs> bye everybody stay cool bye, stay excited stay dry Dry, cool, and excited. Dry, cool, and excited. That is the Im- that those are the important things to be. Yep. Bye. Two of the three is fine. <laughs> Bye.